the computer power supply. It's almost as mysterious as the phrase, I'm fine, just leave me alone. I mean, what does that even mean? If I actually leave you alone to go play video games, will I be making a huge mistake and will I pay for it later? I mean, if you were fine, wouldn't you want to talk to me like you normally do? And if you're not fine, when it blows up later, will it be your fault for not communicating clearly or my fault for not understanding? Please, just tell me what you want! Anyway, so while I'm not qualified to help you understand women, I can help you choose the right wattage power supply for your PC. Step one is finding out how much power you actually need for the components inside your PC. This is expressed in the total number of watts that the unit is capable of outputting. And the best way to find all that out is to head over to coolermaster.outervision.com, it's linked in the video description, and enter the stuff you're using or plan to use. It's that simple. If you run into anything confusing, just post it in the linustechtips.com forum under power supplies and our awesome community will help you out. Now that calculator does add a bit of fudge factor for stuff like the aging of your components over time, so it might err on the side of a little bit too much, but it's best not to try to squeeze under that and use something insufficient. That can result in unexpected shutdowns and wear and tear over time. Now some people will naturally go completely the other way and see 400 watts in the calculator and figure, well, to be safe I'll just grab a 1200 watt power supply. But but that's not necessarily right either. First, your wallet will be more empty than it had to be, and second, your system efficiency will actually be lower than if you bought something more appropriate. A power supply operates optimally above about 15 to 25% of its total capacity. That means that your system will actually draw more power from the wall than it has to, and your power bill will cost a bit more. Sounds terrible, right? Well, sometimes it makes sense. I'm one of those people who went overkill on my power supply, but it's because it has a fanless, zero decibel mode for completely silent operation when I'm not fully utilizing my PC. An example of this is Cooler Master Silent Pro Hybrid Series, which doesn't even turn on the fan until it reaches 200 watts of load. So you can trade a bit of efficiency for quiet if you're into that. Step two is finding a power supply that matches the wattage your calculator spat out. There are two ways that the capability of a power supply can be expressed, as peak wattage or continuous wattage. Now I have a hint for cutting through the BS here. If a power supply is rated in continuous, then that's good. If it's rated in continuous with a separate peak rating, then that's good too. If it only has a peak rating, then don't put it anywhere near your system because there's no real standard for what peak means. Can it handle that for an hour? A minute? A week? A split second before it goes nuclear? We don't know. If a power supply is rated only in peak wattage but not continuous, don't even consider buying it. Which leads us to the final step, picking a power supply of sufficient quality. It's important, and this isn't one of those used car salesman moments here, guys. I get asked all the time why I don't review the latest power supply with 100 multicolored LEDs and an acrylic case from Jack Tech. And the answer is that I don't care about it at all. A power supply is a serious piece of equipment, not a fashion statement, and unless it's from a trusted manufacturer with all the appropriate safety certifications and or gets a seal of approval from Johnny Guru or a similarly reputable power supply review site, I'm not going to touch it. A power supply can fail spectacularly, triggering the premature or even immediate failure of other components in your system, and your warranty will not cover you being a doofus and relying on a potato to provide provide safe, stable power to your PC. And that's not even the worst case scenario. A fire caused by a power supply can burn down your house. On that somber note, our sponsor for this episode is Cooler Master, and the only power supply brand you should ever consider buying is Cooler Master because... Nah, I'm just messing with you guys. Cooler Master would have to pay me a lot more than they are to pretend that they're the only solid power supply brand that exists. In all seriousness though, this video was brought to you by Cooler Master and they are one of the solid power supply makers with options ranging from uh, value oriented solutions like the GN series all the way up to the V series which includes modular cabling, extremely low ripple and uses only high quality Japanese capacitors. And uh, I think we're done here. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're shopping for a power supply, it is definitely worth checking out the sponsor link in the video description to see if they have anything that floats your boat. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video and share it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future Fast as Possible episodes or any comments for me and the rest of the team here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos from us here at TechWiki.